It's a pleasure to be with you. This afternoon, some students of the University of Ghana's Mensa Saba and Commonwealth Halls are on the warpath with the school's management over a decision to revoke their residency in the school. Under a new program announced two weeks ago, the university's council said all continuing male students in the two halls will lose their residence, uh, residential status starting this coming academic year, uh, which all kicks off on the 14th of January. The idea is to quell the persistent violent clashes between students from the two halls. Now, we have a breakdown of that for you shortly, uh, but this morning, an attempt by the students to hold a news conference to protest the school's decision was met with resistance from the management who deployed security to stop them. So are you saying that are you saying that anybody, any student can just walk into the SRC building and start doing anything? Why don't we have a press conference? Why? Nobody is preventing you from having then a press please, conference. Let's not try that. People are here. Listen to me. Okay. So please, you are in the University of Ghana. Yes. And the University of Ghana has rules. So you don't mm -hmm. think that your, no, uh, you your, your, your own if interest I'm... can override everything? No. They, you can contact the SRC building. So, so you fine. call him for us? You need the confirmation. If you I don't, don't do it. that, you won't enter that place. I'm not entering. You're using the phone. You will not be there. Why? Please, let us talk to the one who... The students then attempted to speak to the media outside the campus. Here, too, they were followed by security. <laughs> Right, now that news conference eventually did happen, but at a completely different location. On 13th of December 2022, the university management issued a communique announcing that all continuing male students in Mensa Saba and Commonwealth Hall will lose their rooms. This arrangement is a precursor to welcome an in-out-out-out policy, which will be implemented upon successful execution of this decision. Today, we tell them, as students, we always cannot be at the receiving end of management's incompetence. No. Somewhere in 2020, after about 10 years of operating the Diaspora House, which is now UGL Hostels, we as students did our part by paying the high hostel fees slabbed on us. The investing management failed their part to service the loan contracted to build this hall project, which has resulted in the privatization of these halls, and also a takeover of some annexes of other halls to be used as collateral. Once again, as students, we find ourselves victims of incompetence and mismanagement as we are made to take a bitter pill of absorbing the monetary cost of the actions and inactions of management of this university. Today, we are compelled to cough up more than 3,800 3, cities, being an increment in UGL residential fees to an already expensive residential fees of 2,980 Ghana cities per year within a space of two years. The other traditional hall annexes, which have now been privatized, again due to incompetence of university management, also slabs different hostel fees on students higher than the students in different annexes of the same hall. The last time such a residence arrangement was implemented in the school was an in-out-out-in system to tackle accommodation deficits. However, after an assessment and report by external contractors, the findings revealed that the room should be decongested for good ventilation and what is so now, the inner rooms be made an open place as the conversion has a long-term effect on the building. These and many others were the recommendations. Now, the university under Professor Ernest Aite as vice chancellor undertook decongestation, abolished the then existing in, out, 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 in policy, getting our students a place to be on campus to pursue our academic journey. This meant that Parents and students would not worry about how to get accommodation yeah, as University yeah. of Ghana is sited around an area where cost of living and accommodation is relatively very high. Fast forward to 2022, the university management has sat idle and looked on for over a decade for us to go back into accommodation crisis and their solution is an in-out-out-out policy. We say to them today, the same way they sat and planned to roll out 
this obnoxious policy, which will take full effect by 2025, they should have that same plan for building more hostels to accommodate the ever-increasing student admissions by 2025. Yes. Yes. The investing management, which fails to provide proper security for students, fails to have conclusive investigations, but has been quick to issue a wholesale sanction that affects all male continuing students in Mensa Saba Hall and Commonwealth Hall. The said riot, which by the report of management lasted for almost four hours. Throughout this period of time, the university security were around yes. and a police patrol car was parked near the university guest house. Interestingly, we have confirmed that some top level university management members were also near the guest house. And what did they do? Nothing. All these individuals and agencies could have dispersed and brought calm to this route, but they did not act. They were very close by an estimated 100 meters away and watched on. This has made us believe that the investing management had a grand scheme. They were overwhelmed by their incompetence and wanted an easy way out. So why not watch on, then use this opportunity to cripple the students' front and at the same time find a perceived solution to the accommodation problem. The pro VC for Academic and Student Affairs said on Radio Universe that investigations into the riots have, has not been concluded, yet the university has unreservedly sanctioned innocent continuing male students. Natural justice has been sacrificed on the altar of convenience. When he was asked that, why should the actions of a few affect the majority, he further went on to say, in every security situation, people who are not involved will get affected. Oh. If it happens, it happens everywhere. And when there is war, innocent people get killed. It is a reality of life. Is this the kind of leadership fit to oversee the welfare and affairs of students? No. The provincy no. must resign. Yes. yes. The investing management maliciously brought out this information a week to the beginning of Christmas and expect parents and students to find money for, to pay an accommodation at a place which now costs over 3,800 cities, as compared to the about 1,000 cities they would have paid in the original halls. Why burden parents and innocent students this way? This decision by investing management is synonymous to the ideology behind the archaic trocracy system. Long-lasting solutions include a roundtable discussion by the main actors in these halls with no ostrich behavior about the existence of main actors like the traditional councils and the alumni of these halls. This current decision by management we know is malicious and not only limited to one, breaking the activism powerhouse of the students' front, two, weakening the alumni allegiance and affiliation of students to these halls upon completion of their studies. Three, giving these two powerhouses a bone as a form of distraction so we will not focus on the outrageous increments of residential and academic fees above the 15% approved by parliament. Nonetheless, we say to University of Ghana management today that we will not remain resolute and we will not koto to such knee-jerk reactionary approach. Why does university management want to rate young level 100 of mentorship? senior classmates' advice and the benefits that they enjoyed by having continuing students direct them when they were in the university. We would want to send a firm notice to university management that we will fight for our rights with all tools at our disposal. We will not stand and watch our future and that of other future generations jeopardized because you as management failed. We would have a legal battle and we know and have capriciously crippled the JCR system in both halls, making it quite impossible to have leadership lead a charge. We tell them today that we have seen it, but it's impossible. And, but impossible is nothing. We shall push through and find leaders amongst us. From the ashes, the phoenix rises. To our fellow Vikings and Vandals, just like our national anthem says, and help us to resist the oppressor's rule. Yeah, we'll be engaging these student leaders uh, on their concerns shortly. But before that, let's break down the issue as we understand it. My colleague, uh, Kweku Asante, is joining me for that. Uh, uh, Kweku was also a resident of Commonwealth Hall uh, during his time uh, on the University of Ghana campus. Uh, Kweku, okay, break it down for those of us who, are, who have never been there. What exactly is the issue? Well, Kojo, so there is this inter-hall inter rivalry in most of Ghana's public universities. In Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology, there's a similar thing there. Even in UCC where you were, there's something similar. And so in the University of Ghana, this feud is between Commonwealth Hall, which is an all-male hall, and then Mensa Saba Hall. And so it is not clear exactly what is the antecedent to this conflict, but it has been going on for many years. So many years, even before I joined, and even before, even after I left, 
there is still a number of conflicts that keep happening. Indeed, a number of them have led to the burn of school properties. One recent one that happened had, there were some cars that were parked at the Mensa Sabah Hall. They were all violently destroyed. There's been a number of them that has led to destruction of properties that belongs to the university. A number of them that have led to injuries that the university have had to take care of. And so the university have been trying to deal with this over the last few years. They've not been able to put a handle on it. And so the last one that happened that seemed to have broken the back of the camel was just about when school was about to go on vacation, when residents of Commonwealth Hall and residents of Mensa Saba Hall clashed just around the Mensa Saba Hall. A number of cars that were parked there, some of them belonging to the, um, the, the hall officials, and other students were completely destroyed. At one point, one particular car was raised down by fire. And so they have been going on for some time now. Management have not been able to suspend any student. They've not been able to hold any specific student as the ones behind these. They've also had calls to say that they are old residents of Mensa Sabah Hall and Commonwealth Hall who, although having completed school so many years ago, keep coming back to the school to ferment the trouble, to ask these students to go ahead and do some of these things. And so, like I told you, when the last incident happened, the new vice chancellor, Professor Nanaba, decided to stamp her feet and take some critical measures. What they first decided to do was to transfer the hall master for Commonwealth Hall, as well as their senior tutor. They relieved them of their duty. Management blamed them for not having taken strong stance to prevent the members or the residents in Commonwealth Hall from going out to engage in quote-unquote violence because management have not been able to hold specific students responsible. But that was not to be. That was not to be all the actions management was going to take. Only two weeks ago, management announced a decision that has now drawn the anger of the student leaders on campus. Management says for Commonwealth Hall, for instance, all continuing students, that is level 200, 300, 400, are all going to lose their residence in those halls. Management says they will allow them to apply to other halls, but of course, there's no, it's not a given that if you apply to Liman or, uh, or, or TF or any other hall that you get a hall. So that is for Commonwealth Hall. In terms of Saba, management is taking out all the male residents in a hall, just like they are doing with the Commonwealth Hall as well, but they are leaving the female students there. Management says they are going to populate these halls with level 100 students, freshers, freshmen and women who are now coming in to be in those halls, and the idea is that if these are fresh students who do not know the antecedent of this conflict, who don't know why these violence keep happening, then that will not also happen. And then they are also going to add a number of um, graduate students. The students are concerned that this will affect student leadership, this will affect the whole affiliation system, and a number of what they call the student activism pride of these two halls. So they've been going on for years. Indeed, even for those of us who point out specifically why men's Sasaba Hall and Commonwealth Hall students are fighting. Mm. And to give an, 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 an anecdote, when I went to Level 100, I went there with a friend. He went to men's Sasaba Hall. I was in Commonwealth Hall. So with this, perpetu uh, with this tradition perpetuating, it meant that if there was any conflict and I was involved, for instance, and I met this friend of mine, you had to beat him up. You had to, and some of, some of them had to be with kidnapping students and scraping off their hair, among other things. So it is against this background that management has decided that we have to take some tough measures. Mm. You know that in KNUSC, management took a similar decision. Of course, it has not specifically ended the situation. A management flows like this could probably bring an end to the conflict on campus. Right, let me ask you this. Uh, you, you were there, and you were swept into this culture. You were made to understand that the Mensa Saba Hall students are your rivals. Do, do you know, did you ever find out what the originating incident was, the reason why these two uh, halls are rivals? That is the irony around this conflict because the average University of Ghana student, the average student in these two halls does not have, the, does not have an idea as to what exactly is happening. Some of them are simply roped in, they are assimilated, they are, they are, they are oriented to think that if you are in Commonwealth Hall and you are male, the male student in the Mensa Summer Hall is your rival, not just rival, is your enemy, and vice versa. And so it's gone on for a long time. The ordinary student, like I'm saying, 
does not even have an idea why they have to fight. Then, so then, the then it makes me wonder, will the authorities plan to uh, bring in freshers who have no knowledge of the history uh, in, and in some way break, uh, you know, uh, years of rivalry? Will it even work? Those who are fighting don't know why they are fighting. So Indeed, they, uh, that is the concern people have said, Kojo. For instance, on campus, there are times where you have friends in Commonwealth or maybe in final year they decided to go to Pent or another hall. And then all of a sudden they changed. They did not have to engage in all their quote-unquote rowdy behavior. And then there's someone in Pent or Liman or J. Nelson for three years, and they came to say Commonwealth or, or Men's Saba Hall in their final year. Then all of a sudden they are assimilated into their culture. So it has to do with something within the hearts of residents that management will have to be able to put a lid on. Because like I told you, Kenya University decided to do the same thing. Indeed, they changed Katanga and Conti. It used to be all male halls. They changed them to make sure they brought in more females, particularly in level 100. That did not stop the conflict. Indeed, just before the school went on vacation, there was a similar conflict that led to injuries and destruction of properties on campus. So the question people have been asking is, Management needs to be able to go down to the root of why exactly students are fighting each other. And armed with that knowledge, then you, can be, you, you will be able to fight whatever it is that is happening. But without knowing the root cause, changing this is just symptomatic. And then at the end of the day, these new level hundreds that you bring will keep up doing something that has been assimilated into the tradition of the hall as what they have to do and as the culture of these two halls. So... Ultimately, are there any students who want this to end? Any Mensa Saba or Commonwealth Hall students who actually want the conflict to end? Indeed, in, a, in an earlier statement that these two halls put out together, and quote unquote, they've been rivals, but when this decision was taken by management, they had to come together to fight it. And you've seen them there hold a press conference today. About two weeks ago, they put out a statement saying that management has been negligent and that they themselves as students want this to end. And they've been eliciting the support of management over the years to try and end this. But management has not given them that ear. And so from the student perspective, they claim, to, they claim that they want this to end and that management has to do more. And that this decision that management is taking is simply putting the responsibilities on their shoulder instead of management admitting that they've been reticent in terms of being able to deal with this situation. So from the perspectives of these two halls, who you see there with a the common water cloth and people wearing men's of summer, this is, the, this, is, this is ironic. This is almost like the first time I'm seeing residents on both sides doing this. Sometimes when it's sports, there's violence. Almost everything that happened between these two halls leads to some fight of a sort. But this time around, they are coming back united. It means that if management is able to leverage on the current unity, that these two halls are coming together to, to, to form a, a, an alliance of a sort, then they can deal with the conflict. But if not, these new level hundreds that you may bring in, you may not know who will come and see them. Already management is deciding that they're going to charge every student 300 Ghana cities to install some security entrance at the various halls of residence, which will not allow persons who are not ordinarily resident to be able to go in there. These are some of the, 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 the decisions management is taking. But as whether it will work or not, the KNUST story is there for people to view that some of these decisions, although they may be far-reaching, do not necessarily work. Now, we heard the student leaders in their statement talk about congestion. Does this play any role at all in the conflict? Indeed, that is also the point some people have raised, that over the years, management have been trying to deal with accommodation crisis on campus almost every year we have to report on a number of students who have been admitted not getting um, accommodation on campus. So if you're coming from Bolgatanga, you're coming from Tamale, and you're not getting a bed on campus, you need to get something outside. At the last count, the University of Ghana have about 60,000 students, or more, indeed. They also put a number around 70,000. The number of beds on campus is not even up to 20,000. So the backlog is huge. The number of students who will simply not get a bed through their four-year stay on campus. So the theory that some others have been propounding is that because management has not been able to deal with the accommodation crisis on campus, they find this as a means to introduce a new policy called the in-out-out policy. That is to say that if you come to level 100, you are in. 
you get a bed on campus. But when you go to level 200, level 300, and level 400, then you have to fend for yourself. You need to go and find accommodation either outside of campus or make do with some of the private hostels on campus. Currently, if you go to the traditional halls, Men's Sabah Hall is one, Commonwealth Hall is one, Water Hall, Equafo Hall, and Legon Hall. These halls mainly have the main halls that is populated by three students in a room. Ordinarily, these rooms were supposed to be filled by only a student, one person in the bigger room, and what is now an inner room that is being filled with someone used to be a balcony, which mm. has now been converted into a room that one person sits in there. Mm. And so the accommodation challenge on the University of Ghana campus has been achieved over the past few years. And so there are those who have said that management is latching upon this to introduce a raft, this raft of measures which would deal with the accommodation crisis on campus because then when the continuing students are phased out, Level 100 students will get a bed because those are the ones management care about the most. If you're on level 300 and 400, chances are you can fend for yourself. You can find somewhere to be on campus, could you? Uh, and the students don't like uh, the idea of congestion being dealt with? They prefer congestion? Well, it's, it's not necessarily so. They want the accommodation crisis to be dealt with. Indeed, over the past few months, prior to this academic year, there were some protests on campus where students calling on university management to deal with the accommodation crisis on campus. They only feel management is taking an opportunistic view of this. But they're also against the in-out-out policy that management is seeking to introduce. With the current accommodation arrangement we have, Kojo, if you're admitted to the University of Ghana and you got a bed in Commonwealth Hall, you are guaranteed that bed until you complete your four years stay on campus. What this will now mean is that if you come to level 100 and you get a bed at, say, Sabah Hall or Legon Hall, after your level 100, you lose that bed and you have to find another bed in a, either in a private hostel or in any of those private hostels that are around campus. And the students do not like this. They say that the University of Ghana have some vast amount of land. They should do PPP, private uh, a partnership, to get a number of hostels built so that more students will get it. University of Ghana... Commonwealth, for instance, have been trying to build an annex for a number of years now, but that process has been frustrated by management, led by this same vice chancellor, and uh, the management of these laws have raised some significant concerns about that. So they feel like it's not as though they are against management plans to fix the accommodation crisis on campus. They say, one, this will not fix it. This is only postponing the inevitable. And management is taking undue advantage of the violence on campus between these two halls to take these measures, which will not last in the scheme of things. Kweko Asante, thank you so much for that uh, quite in-depth breakdown of the history behind the conflict between Commonwealth and Mensa Saba Halls on Legon uh, campus of the University of Ghana. Now, it's not only the current students that are concerned about this situation. Former students are as well. Jeffrey Addo is a former student. He joins us. Uh, with a little bit more on this. Now, uh, Jeff, thank you for your time. Uh, tell us, when, when did you uh, leave University of Ghana? All right, thank you too. Um, so I left University of Ghana in um, August 2019. Okay, right. so that's like three years ago. Yeah, you've been out yeah. for three years. So why are you still concerned about what's happening? <laughs> okay, so um, as we know, when you are completed, when you are done with school, okay, you become an alumni, okay, of uh, both your hall of residence and also the school as a whole. Okay, so as an alumni, uh, the continuous students, okay, on campus have shared some of their grievances with me, okay, and so I also took an interest in it, okay, to also uh, try and help them out, okay, in their course. Okay, so I mean, talk to me. How, how do you how do you feel about um, the university management's uh, plans and and processes so far? In out 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 to break the cycle of violence. Uh, do you think that will work? Um, honestly speaking, I don't think so. Okay, because the in out out system was abolished ten years ago. Okay, under the leadership of uh, Professor Aite, the then VC of Legon. Okay, that was in 2012. Okay, I, I was in 
even in school by then. Okay, so honestly, I didn't even meet the in out out system. I don't know how it feels, and I I even don't want to have a feel of it. Okay, because if I'm um, if I apply for a hall, okay, in my first year. Okay, and there's a system in place which, you know, guarantees my stay on campus for the next four years. I think it is the best, you know, um, system to be used. Okay, I, I don't know why management, uh, you know, is trying to change, you know, the in-in-in system to the old and abolished in-out Surely in, out, management's out reasoning is, is obvious, isn't it? Management thinks that this fighting is institutionalized. And when people come in, they are sucked into an existing culture. They want to remove the existing culture. So there's nothing to, to suck you in when you come in. Do you not think that will stop the conflict? Um, I, I don't think so. Okay, as my uh, colleague said earlier, okay, students themselves have tried engaging management, okay, in one way or the other as to how to uh, bring a halt to all these violent issues on campus. But management has refused to give a listening ear to the student's body. Okay, currently, Mensa Sabah Hall and then Commonwealth Hall have no JCR in place to even voice out what, you know, they, they think or what they also want to contribute to uh, the decision management is taken at the moment. Okay, so it's sort of like an autonomous body in place right now, which is not helping the students and the entire university body at all. Okay, so um, I, 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 I disagree with that. Okay. Okay, so what would your solution be? How, how do we stop the violence? Well, the violence, <laughs> um, it's, it's stoppable, okay? Um, it, will, it can't be, you know, just as a goal, but, you know, uh, I believe measures have to be put in place, okay, as to which, um, you know. The, the thing is, uh, Commonwealth Hall feels, you know, they are superior over any other hall on the university campus. Okay, it's the same way Mensa Sabah Hall also feel. Okay, so if I could remember, um, uh, during my stay on campus, okay, the then Dean of Students, uh, Professor uh, Dr. Bob King, okay, uh, he placed some measures in place, okay, that during matriculations, okay, where, you know, every hall matches their freshers to the grounds, and then, you know, they escort them there, and then they can have their matriculation uh, process. Okay, now during this escorting, sometimes uh, Commonwealth, you know, uses the path of Saba and then there's a clash and all that. Okay, so what he did was he allocated routes, okay, that is two various halls could use, you know, during such events. And ever since then, um, the, the um, clashes that used to happen during matriculation was stopped. It was eradicated. You understand? Okay, so there are various measures that even management would give a listening ear to the student's body, we can suggest to them, okay, we can suggest to them as to the ways and how, you know, we can uh, um, help abolish this whole uh, rivalry stuff. I okay? think that's what I'm because asking you. What are these suggestions? What would you suggest to management as uh, solutions? Okay, so for example, okay, during uh, sporting activities, okay, mm. let's say there's a b-ball match between Commonwealth Hall and Sabah Hall. Okay, ideally, uh, we are to go there to cheer on our players, okay? But then, if <laughs> we don't win, okay, you know, out of anger, out of frustration, you know, we may try to, you know, uh, do some skirmishes, okay? So, you know, in events like this, okay, you can allow just the players be at the venue to have their game on, okay? So no supporters will be around, okay? And to in, what would be in, in doing that... Of a, of, an, of a sports event that no one, nobody can watch. What would be the point of it? Okay, so right now, as we are speaking, as via Zoom, okay, we can just simply uh, stream this live, okay, that we can sit in our hall of residence and, you know, be watching this. Afterwards, the players will come back to the hall. We can jubilate with them. You know, we've helped keep a situation. 
you understand. So for the measures, they are locked. They are locked. Uh, we can we can side them up depending on the events that will you know unfold at the moment. Okay, but then they, they just refuse to you know listen to us or involve us in any decision making. That's that's the point. So does the alumni intend to um, you know uh, pull up a chair and take a seat at the table in finding a solution? Do you intend to communicate officially with um, the administration of the university? We have, we have. We have gone to the various halls to engage the whole management. And what we were told is that you are working for the management of the schools and not the students. And so what the management would instruct them to do is what they are going to do. So that means no amount of uh, meeting or course at their end will, 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 you know, yield results. Okay, so that is the point you are in now. Okay, because... When this decision came on the 13th of December, it was during vacation. You know, we all vacated, knowing that we are in the in-in-in system, only to get home, preparing for Christmas, and then management just throws this at us, that next, night, uh, next semester when you come to school is in, out, out. I'm taking all continuous students out of their various school. How can you do, you know, such a thing? You know, where do you want our parents to get money? to, you know, uh, um, pay for new accommodation in this new horse. We charge more than what the traditional horse are charging. You know, it's, and you know the hardship in the country at the moment. You understand? Okay, so this and more is what we are telling management, that we beg them, we beg them. We are using your platform to appeal to them. That our younger ones are crying out. Their parents are crying out and begging them mm. that they should rescind the decision they have taken. Okay, uh, accommodation problem has been, you know, a major problem for University of Ghana. We all mm. know that. You know, we've tried, you know, to, uh, you know, manage it. That's how come, you know, in the traditional halls, the rooms. Um, it used to be one in a room, but now it's three in a room. Okay. Mm. Now, you're you okay. saying you're taking out continuous students out of it, not providing a new place for them all. It's still the old structures that in case you're going to add them up to, you know, the assistant. It's, 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 it's not the best. You mm. understand? It's not the best. At least if you have even gotten new places for them to stay in, yes, then you've proven to us that you're on top of your game. You understand, but you've not done that yet, so we are compiling, you know, and so we are, we are just moving back to the old thing. You know, right. the congestion we are trying to solve, we are now increasing it as, yeah. as not the best. Okay. All right. I want to thank you very much for your time with us, Jeffrey Addo, uh, who is an alumnus of University of Ghana, a former resident of the Commonwealth Hall. Um, thank you. Thank you for your time. Right.